A very good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to all the speakers and participants uh, in today's session on tech enabled hiring, how automation is revolutionizing volume recruitment. I am your host, Palvi, for today's session. So, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to the hiring, there are few studies of different companies, uh, stats that show that 69% of the world's most admired companies value curious and the fast learners more than those who have impressive career history. So uh, if you look at the data from 2010, uh, only 31% of the recruiters struggled in finding the right candidates. However, in 2022, 75% of the recruiters admitted to struggling on this particular count. So to know more about the facts and the information, we have with us the most eminent speakers from the same industry. So uh, before uh, we move towards the speaker's introduction, let me give you a brief about speed hire. So uh, speed hire, which is a technical hiring and assessment tool that we can trust to surface best fit candidates. At speed hire, we have uh, we powered more than 100 million assessments for our customers, defining end to end elements for the technical hiring process. So speed hire offers a perfect virtual hiring solution to multiple challenges faced by the recruiters in technical hiring. So uh, for so we have uh, with us Madhumita, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, to brief us more about the speed hire. So without any further delay, uh, I would like uh, to request all my speakers to kindly uh, give a small introduction before we move towards the questions. So over to you, Mr. Mathur. Hi, thanks. Uh, thanks, Panvi. My name is uh, Mukul and uh, uh, thank you for, for having me part of this panel. I've, uh, been in the IT industry for I think now 33 odd years, most of it almost three decades uh, were at IBM uh, uh, in different roles. Uh, so I've had a chance to look at uh, the industry from different dimensions, different transformations and, and uh, people and skills have always been a very uh, close uh, subject for me as we build the businesses. Uh, of course, I currently specialize on cloud transformation and cybersecurity, but uh, like I said, uh, automation AI in every dimension of business uh, is an area of interest, and I would love to hear uh, the discussion here. Thank you so much, Mr. Mathur. So, uh, Mr. Shah? Yeah, good afternoon, and thank you, uh, Times Internet. So, my name is Amulya, Jan Bhumi Bihar, Karm Bhumi UP, Noida almost 25 years in uh, HR now. So I worked for HCL for 10 years, both in India and abroad, and four years with Soft, eight years with Samsung, and then finally uh, three and a half years with uh, Team Computers now. Okay, So yesterday I turned 50, so I have only one or two years more left in corporate, Mughal. And then I say bye-bye to corporate and do some more meaningful uh, stuff in life. Uh, life has been uh, beautiful so far. So I love participating in seminars, because that's where you give it back to the society, right? So all the experiences that you gather, uh, one has to die empty, whatever knowledge that you carry. So that is what I believe. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy that I'll be co-sharing my thoughts along with uh, Mukul and Sadesh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sir, and congratulations. <laughs> uh, Mr. Singh? Thank you, Pallavi. And uh, Amulya, as you go out, we hope that all that knowledge and experience that you empty some of it would fall around us as well and we'd hopefully be able to learn from your experiences and learnings as well uh, good afternoon everyone my name is shelish i am the country head for a us-based uh, rpo or recruitment process outsourcing organization called clo talent uh, prior to this i've done a variety of roles both as an in-house head of talent acquisition for organizations like Max and a previous trend at GenPAC. And I've also worked at on the consulting side prior to CLO, building the recruitment business for an organization called People Strong. So that's a little bit about me based out of Gurgaon and uh, looking forward to interacting and learning from everybody on the screen and all 35 of you who are with us so far. So thank you for joining and look forward to the session. Thank you, Mr. Singh. So, Madhumita. Uh, thanks, thanks, Pallavi. Uh, pretty excited to be on this conversation. So, hi, team, and hi, everyone. I'm Madhumita Vankadesh. 
and uh, i am a product specialist and i am in times internet at the gig department and i have more than like 2 plus years experience in this organization especially and i have mastered in the management as well as uh, in my ug i have been you know completed with the ai aml and as well as you know cloud based uh, systems yes so right now with the product management side how the product is getting developed and doing the research about the product as well as revolutionizing the industry so that's what you know right now it's going on with this thank you thank you so much madhumita uh, for the brief uh, so now we will start with the questions uh, so my questions will, my question will be uh, from mr mathur so uh, mr mathur as a, a business leader uh, what are the key challenges that you are facing when it comes to recruitment particularly the high volume i think that's a that's a great question and uh, uh, let me let me start by saying that uh, you know i was once in a seminar and one of the speakers made a very uh, pertinent comment there he said that uh, india doesn't have a problem of employment india has a problem of employability so it is you know when you when you come out with a with a requirement or a job it is not that you don't get applications you get more applications that you can handle but uh, but it is very difficult to sift through them to identify the right candidate in a manner which is uh, fast effective and so on and you know and, and gives you the right candidate i mean there are errors of commission as they say you know so if you end up hiring the wrong person then it's a long term cost and impact and there are errors of omission uh, where you because of just sheer volumes of uh, that you are trying to handle you are not really able to screen in and bring in the best possible uh, resumes and profiles so i mean i have uh, struggled with that many many times uh, and 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 depending on at what levels you are hiring uh, the cost uh, impacts uh, uh, become that much uh, higher and and that much uh, more pronounced so so uh, i think it, this is a the fact that we are having this topic and that we are we are looking at how uh, automation and ai and, and everything else uh, i mean it's impacting every aspect of our life uh, but uh, like you mentioned if 70 to 75% of the recruiters find this same similar challenge uh, then you know that's something that uh, definitely would be very beneficial both for the recruiter and as well as the person seems there some problem in the internet right network issue yeah so um, i think uh, we should move towards mr sa uh, so uh, mr sa uh, what do you think what is the importance of automation uh, in the hiring process and uh, what is the role that it's for its driving efficiency accuracy and inclusivity so so i just add to what bukul was saying that it's not about employment it's about employability so you know Uh, every year in india almost like 1.3 million uh, engineering students they pass out but still we have tough time all the all the organization whether big or small or mid size uh, getting the right candidate okay so it's like that uh, uh, phrase that we used to uh, hear long back uh, water water everywhere not a single drop to drink and the dichotomy in india is that you have one la one crore 140 crore people growing so fast but still we are uh, fighting for the same uh, talent right so long back somebody had said that uh, one of my senior i think sujit bakshi when he was there he, he used to talk about mercenaries versus missionaries okay so mercenaries he used to say all the lateral talent and missionaries were all people whom we used to hire and groom okay the still the big ones they continue to do that we pros of the world and pcss of the world but when you talk about mid size and small and medium we have uh, we are actually vying in the same pool for the same same fish looking at that they call the purple squirrel okay you you'll get that but very difficult to spot right so on one side if you're talking about uh we'll say uh, uh what do you say high volume hiring the other side you're saying how do we automate automation can help you um, at certain level okay so when you're talking about high volume hiring you can always do the right jds 
uh, put some uh, uh, RPA around it or AI around it, which does the filtering and you get the stack ranking. Most of all, most of the automation tools or most of the ATSs, they do that, right? But still, there are a lot of errors that you'll find. But your time, obviously, can reduce. But when you're doing high volume recruitment, we don't know what is the chances of getting the right fit because uh, you're not actually targeting the passive candidates because you'll finally you'll find mostly the active candidates and a lot of jump junk coming in. So even the smallest or the uh, the, the, the bottom lower lower, lower uh, rung of the people that you want to hire, if you put an ad in LinkedIn or Nokri, you can see so much of junk coming in, right? Automation can do that filtering and the ATSs of two days, whichever you uh, take, they will do that work for you. But still, you'll have to inbuilt your own intelligence to see that you're filtering the right candidates which are suitable for the organization because that fight keeps on going. I, I can I, I am 100% sure Silesh will add because he's been doing talent acquisition that 10 resumes use. We say that it is fitting the JDs that are the description that the business manager has given. When you give it back to them, they say okay, only three are OK, but rest of six are not uh, what we told you. Right. So there's a huge gap between what the business wants and what we want. So that is where I think before the AI is or the uh, uh, automation comes in, we have to ensure what kind of JD, what kind of filtration, what kind of uh, 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 what do you say, skills that we are looking at. So that AI does the job or RPA does the job to get that stack ranking and then we provide it because bulk hiring time is an essence. The right skill is an essence. Uh, uh, back out, a uh, lot of back outs happen, right? Uh, fake candidates can come in. We have all would have encountered in our lives, right? Uh, that somebody else is sitting giving the interview, but at least now you have uh, all the other uh, IT uh, was proctoring and all which makes it uh, easier right but automation can help when you're talking about uh, the mass hirings to bring down the time but we can't guarantee whether we are getting the right candidate or not okay i think salish can add more to what we are looking at here yeah uh, so uh, mr singh what do you think what are the best practices for implementing tech enabled hiring strategies I honestly don't know if organizations are following best practices, Pallavi, and and that's where I think I like Amulya's point about defining things clearly. Um, I've been leading this debate about what should and shouldn't be part of a job description, because that's the first point of going out and telling somebody what is it or who is it that I'm wanting to recruit. As a recruiter, if you were to do a survey and ask people, let's say if you were to ask the 47 people on the call today as to what is that one factor that causes the biggest amount of mismatch between what I'm looking and what I'm getting, you'll get the answer that is the compensation. So when I publish a job, as an organization, I don't even want to tell what am I going to pay for it. Right. And unfortunately, we are living in an age where somebody with 10 years of experience is also a CEO. And somebody with 30 years of experience is also a CEO. The other unfortunate reality is that the job descriptions, it seems to me, are just being copy pasted from somewhere. I am yet to see a job description that clearly, crisply calls out what the job really entails. I read 10 JDs, it feels like everybody just made the same job. And that's not possible. You are different organizations in different industries at different stages of your evolution. Surely what you expect from your talent has to be different. But it's not. It's broadly the same JD. When you pick up 10 JDs for the same role, it almost feels like the same JD. So here we are throwing a standard job description at a candidate similar years of work, it's not telling them what am I going to pay? And then 300 applications come on LinkedIn to Amulya's point. And then now I'm looking for automated solutions to find one out of that 300. It's not going to happen. No technology is smart enough today. I hope it becomes that smart in the years to come. But today, unfortunately, we don't have a tech that's so smart that can read a CV and gauge my compensation expectations. 
right? Or for that matter, my fitment to the skills that I'm required to work on, work on. So I think if organizations need to move away from that complexity of 70% of the recruiters, the data that you shared earlier, Pallavi, struggling to find the right match for a job, they have to first introspect and see how much information are they willing to comfortably disclose which allows somebody on the other, other side to make an informed choice. Today, that option is not there with a candidate to make an informed choice. And probably on the same thread, before I pass it back to you, another aspect that is an outcome of the same issue is that most organizations today are going out and saying, I want to hire a diversity candidate. It's almost a fad and people are wanting to do everything. The first thing you need to do is understand the psyche of a diverse profile. So let me share a little bit about what I mean. Our JDs, like I said, are standard copy-pasted JDs where you put anything and everything that you want from the role holder. It's almost like if somebody could deliver this, they should be rock stars anyways in the organization because the JD says they want everything that a human can possibly do. Here's a research that says that when the JDs are very, very generic, they capture a lot of information, the percentage of women who apply to those jobs drops by 42%. And that is so because women like things to be crisp. They want to know what is it that they have to do and whether or not they have the capability to deliver that or not. Unlike us men, who will say, I can climb, climb the Mount Everest also. Right? We sometimes tend to overcommit. Women do not overcommit. Women are more sincere. Women are more serious about what they intend to do and what they're getting into. So the moment they see five elements in the JD, three of them may not be necessary, but are there. They see that I don't bring that skill set, and they would generally not apply. Men would still apply because a man feels intrinsically they'd be able to do it even if they have not learned it today a woman doesn't think that right so we have so many aspirations we want to hire faster we want to hire diverse we want to get the best person but our very first step of that effort which is to go out and communicate with clarity as to what i need isn't there in place so there is no best practice i think the best practices need to start coming in where organizations ta teams think way more deeply about how am I approaching my search for talent to enable the right kind of talent to come and also enable the technologies to offer some help? So that, that's my take on you know, your best practice question. Thank you so much, Mr. Singh, for uh, the brief uh, about uh, the challenges that uh, everybody is facing right now in terms of recruitment. So uh, now again, I would like to ask Ms. Mathur, Mr. Mathur, uh, what are the risk and mitigation steps that need to be considered while pursuing automation in hiring? Yeah, I think uh, I, I'll, I'll build up on what Shailesh and Namulya talked about. Uh, I think the, the fundamental point on automation, and, and I think Shailesh mentioned about, uh, about job descriptions and compensation. I think it, it's a decision point. It's not a technology challenge. It's, a, it's an executive decision point on whether you want to share it or you don't want to share it. And, uh, and what happens is, so if you look at the various tools that are available for recruitment, automation, etc. They pretty much have something like a templatized, you know, input for uh, resumes and applying for jobs, etc. And and so, so you use a lot of that to uh, to filter and scan and 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 do that. But uh, you know, as Shailesh was saying, if you put too many filters and you put too many criteria then then you are likely to have candidates opt out of it and it could be diversity candidates or or even anybody else or if i could use a cyber security term people could go and do keyword hacking hacking right so they will go pick up the keywords that possibly you are looking for and make sure that their templates and their profiles majorly highlight those keywords uh, whether they are good at it or not good at it is is a subsequent discussion. So, so, so this whole process of the design, 
uh, on how you want to design the usage of that automation tool i think is a very very critical point and uh, i think that has come up and and that that the recruiters have to be very very sensitive about because the the good thing about automation is you can process a, a lot of things very fast and very quickly the bad thing about automation is if you do it wrong you can make a lot of mistakes very fast and very quickly so so it has a multiplier effect both on the positive of what you are doing and the negative uh, of, of what you are doing the other element uh, you know and and this has come up uh, uh, again you know in the in the context of ai uh, and and using so so a lot of companies are talking about doing pre screening personality so you can capture qualifications and a lot of uh, biometrics etc but but a lot of these tools are now starting to say hey look we will run some kind of simulation job simulation or a day in the job kind of experience or you know an ai based personality test to check you know how the person can fit etc etc and i think all of that has value it's not something that one could argue whether it should be there or it should not be there it is going to be there that's that's how the future of of this would be but like anything else in ai Uh, i think one needs to be very aware of the bias in ai so who is the person who is training that ai engine what is the criteria on which that ai engine will work how auditable is that ai engine i mean is it is, is it is it running on its own or is there a way to feedback and check as to what it is doing in terms of selection or rejection uh, and and whether people are starting to game it because you know uh, some of us who play around with different ai engines you know that the way you program it or the way you respond to it you can uh, uh, you can uh, influence some of the uh, probabilities and decisions it makes so so i think that again is uh, is a very important part then there are other elements you know because then when you use automation you tend to capture more data than what you need there are data privacy type issues you are capturing so much data do you really need that data you know uh, are your tools really secure enough have you done the right due diligence in terms of protecting all the information that you are collecting and so on and so forth so so it's not it's not that it's a simple panacea for all your there is by the way cost of automation too so it's you have to weigh in whether the cost of automation is more or less versus your cost of not automating uh, and so on and so forth so so uh, at, at an executive level at an uh, at a business leader level you have to weigh in those pros and cons uh, and see you know whether uh, how much of automation where you want to use the automation and where is the human element that you want to put in so that the candidate as well as the recruiting experience uh, has a has a has a right mix of of both so so it's uh, it, it, it requires work thank you thank you mr mathur uh, so um, our next question will be from mr sa again uh, so uh, what do you think how innovative technologies tools and techniques are shaping the future of volume recruitment see what i think i uh, i must say mukul has said a lot of things about what automation can do and what are the limitations there okay so uh, hiring is like ye ishq hai gali jitni aag hamare mein lagi hai utni aag udhar bhi lagi hai so if the ai can do all the filtering their candidates who are doing and using chat gpt to do their cvs and they know what are the filters that they have to put so that their cvs get selected okay and in mass recruitment i i think we are all facing the same thing right but to attract uh, whatever automation that you use but our challenge is how do we attract the right passive candidates not the active ones because that is where the real talent lies okay are have we failed to do the uh, uh, our brand promotion are we only trying to attract from their side and not from our side okay because we we try and put that job description where we put all 36 goons to be matched to one job uh, but we don't get so are we okay to look at people who are from the nearby industry or who are like 70% ready bring them and then train them uh, if we are doing the mass mass recruitment as well so automation is not the solution for what uh, problems that we are looking at okay uh, the problem is to get the right 
talent how do we simplify the automation product uh, automation process so that whatever cvs or the resumes or the candidates that we get are almost what we want almost not uh, the right fit because you as i said it's very difficult to get purple squirrels they exist but they come with a cost they will come with uh, some some nuances here and there <laughs> so for me it's very important how as an organization i am portraying myself to the candidate so that they get attracted because right now i think the challenge is how do we use our uh, uh, members current uh, live members in our organization to refer because so that's the fastest way or if we are recruiting and we have rolled out the offer are we getting referrals from them do we have a solid uh, referrals that is working for you are we also interacting with or maybe using our alumni to talk good about our organization from there only i think we will get automation just having automation and getting volumes of resumes from nokri or linkedin uh, is is not the solution okay so using referrals using our members using our brand are uh, using uh, where people go and search for jobs i'm talking about millennials so if we are putting it i don't know are we there on instagram are we promoting something on instagram where people are looking at it because most of the times is millennials are there and gen z i don't know what uh, applications they'll be using right so if we are promoting our culture our flexibility because i think after hybrid salesh you will agree that uh, people the first question is can i work from home question mark question mark right so uh, if we are if you say no 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 we are hybrid three day, three days you'll have to come to office many will drop out because they are not used to anymore right so we have to change the organization has to change the way we are attracting talent the way we are giving flexibility the way uh, the culture is there to work and the way the managers are handling this uh, generation so x baby boomers gen y they are all over we are talking about gen z and 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 beyond right so the automation or te technology will come with their own Uh, advantages and disadvantages it will be on us how do we use it how do we simplify first of all so that we reduce the time when we have the good hit ratio and how do we use it for our own advantage as well as uh, getting the right candidate right uh, absolutely right mr sa so uh, now uh, moving towards uh, mr singh uh, so mr singh i just wanted to know that uh, now we are in the a uh, tech oriented world like the hiring is also the tech oriented right now so how ai is bridging this gap uh, of between jobs and the hiring uh, process i think it has the potential to bridge it in many ways pallavi uh, and now whatever i'm going to share next i'm assuming anybody who thinks on these lines is first already address the issue of what am i expecting so clean up the jds given the relevant information so that the tech can work if you've done that then technology can be leveraged in different ways and forms you could leverage solutions today even before the hiring process kicks off to get a market map of the talent as to what the talent landscape looks like right which allows a hiring manager and a ta function leader to work together to again define the expectations i may want to hire a certain kind of talent but that talent has to exist so technologies like seek out for example are available today where they give you a good talent landscape for you to know what is available in the market and then you can make those choices and then as you go forward into the process there are technologies available for us to do sourcing to very different and innovative ways for years now india has been recruiting through the nokri.coms and the times.coms and the shine.coms and now there's linkedin but i think the western world is evolved towards crowdsourcing models now Amulya made that point on referrals, right? I mean, imagine an organization with five thousand people referring five thousand people in a year, which is essentially everybody referring one person in a year. That's five thousand applications to the organization. 
And if that's just the power of an employee referral channel, imagine the power of a crowdsourcing channel where everybody is a recruiter. Amulya, for instance, would know a thousand people at least. Mukul would know many more. You would know many more. Madhumita will know many more because you are younger generation, you're well networked. And the 47, 44 people here would know many, many more people. So the Western world and the organizations in the US and Europe are now leveraging the power of crowdsourcing to attract. So there are platforms like Visage, which can be deployed at a fraction of a cost, and you can make anybody a recruiter in your network. Then you've got the challenge of matchmaking, which is where a lot of work has happened in India. I mean, I cannot share with you the number of matchmaking platforms that are available today who say that we can give you a match between the candidate and the job you're looking to hire. I mean, you can just Google it and I'm sure you'll get tons of solutions there. Um, your product, for example, is you know something similar, which is helping create that matchmaking solution for customers. So if nothing else, guys, please uh, refer to Times Internet and the solution that they have to offer around this, right? And uh, see how much of it is available for us to get. Assessments have been in use for, thousand, uh, for tens and twenties of years now, and there are more and more assessments coming up. There is technology available now, which helps with interview scheduling to be done directly between the candidate and the hiring manager without this white glove service being offered where somebody is coming, taking time from one party, going to the other party, and it's just running around in this non-value adding job of trying to coordinate between two people. And so there's technology available. That solution is automated. People can do it amongst themselves. Um, there's technology available for collection of documents. There's technology av available for background screening. There's tech available for salary generation nobody's sitting and creating your compensation now in an excel workbook anymore the systems have the capability to generate it there's technology available for uh, engaging somebody between offer and onboarding so entirely across the entire life cycle of a recruitment process there's tech available i think the question is about understanding what is the need that i have because you can't make the entire process automated. I've had customers who said we don't, is it possible that we don't need people for recruiting and we just automate the entire end-to-end -end process and a system can hire? And there are solutions we're talking about that as well. But my personal take is that at the end of the day, these are people on the other side, on either side. And when people have to make a decision for other people, it becomes the most complex decision of your life. You can simplify the process of buying an iPhone. You can simplify the process of buying a car. I think in the next 15 to 20 years with these mobile homes being built by Mr. Musk, you'll even be able to simplify the process of buying a house. But I think the decision of getting another person to come and be with you, whether it's job or it's marriage, is not the easiest decision. It's the most complex decision. It will always require people behind it, but it can be enabled through technology. So I also want to caution our audience and say, don't go overboard with this automation and AI. At the end of the day, there are people involved. You will need people to work through it, but the technology can definitely make that job easier so that we don't have to invest as many hours. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Singh, we have one question uh, that is coming out. Can automation and volume recruitment help in improving the quality of hires and reducing turnover rates? Can it improve the quality of hire? Maybe. Can automation in volume recruitment helps in improving the quality of hires and reducing turnover rates? So quality of hire, maybe. Uh, again, I'll go back to the same point and I'll keep repeating it. If we define it right, then there's a possibility that technology would be able to do a better job at matchmaking and predict whether somebody is going to be a better 
fit for that job or not. So in that sense, yes. Turnover rate, I think we are looking way too far too ahead in the future. An employee turnover is a factor of so many factors, uh, so many variables that I don't think technology is there today to say whether somebody will stick at the organization or not. It has just got far too many variables. It has got the person I'm going to work with. It has got the person I'm going to work around. It has got the person who will work, people who will work with me. It's got the broader culture of the organization, my enablement, my deci the decision making that is available to me at the organization. How much empowerment is available? How does the value system at the organization fit with my own value system? How much of it can we evaluate in a 20 minute, 30 minute assessment or based on a JD and a CV? So I think it's way too aspirational to think of the reduction in turnover rate. But to say that tech would be able to predict a better fitment between somebody's ability to do a certain job, I definitely feel it can. So just to emphasize, I think, I think uh, when you talk about uh, uh, automation enabling, I think when you're going to the campuses where you're doing volume hiring, I, where there we can definitely see uh, time reduction and get great match. But when you're looking at lateral hirings, if you're looking at skills which are at the lower run, uh, so Mukul, maybe you can add on because you're looking at managed services where you have just L0s and L1s who are just doing desktops and this. And that too is also a mass hiring thing that we're talking about. But as you rise in the pyramid in terms of complexity of skills and complexity of uh, the attributes that we are looking at to people or their managerial skills, uh, there, there will be limitations of automation. And Salesh has beautifully said that it's all about people that we're talking about. We're not talking about machines. So uh, technology is there to help us. And uh, it's not uh, the ultimate results that they are going to uh, give us uh, in the longer run. So we have to balance how we are using the technology for our own benefit uh, and for the organization. Thank you. I think the only thing I will add to that is, uh, you know, is there's a dimension of uh, candidate experience. So uh, like Shelley said, it's not about whether the person will stay in the company for longer time or not. And I mean, if you do and use the technology in a supportive way and not in a replaceable way. So the guy never gets to hear from a person or a human, uh, you know, through the process. It, uh, that that may have, but but definitely uh, it improves the candidate experience through the process, whether they are successful or unsuccessful, because candidates appreciate a response, right? And they and they and they appreciate that if there is a communication, then there is a response. There is a scheduling. There is a there, there is a process that is being followed, you know, and they are going through that process in a fair uh, and objective manner. So technology and automation can help define all of that and give the whole experience to the candidate, uh, which is a very positive experience, whether they're successful candidates or not successful candidates, that is, which in turn, you know, goes back to better brand building. People talk positively about you as a company, as a uh, as a place to work with. All of which has indirect benefits in terms of sourcing, long term uh, retention of employees. So not directly attributable, but but by improving the experience uh, at any level, I think is a great benefit that that if you if the technology is used rightly, uh, is worth the value. I just want to concur with Mukul because that's such a pertinent point. I think the biggest use case of automation in TS space today is candidate experience, uh, particularly in a country like India, which has volumes, as which also has this very unfortunate propensity of lacking professionalism. This whole phenomenon of we will get back to you and then never getting back to somebody needs to stop. And I think tools and technology can play a big role there. At least go back and close the loop with somebody. Right? Somebody chose to invest 30, 60 minutes of their life with you trying to explore something that you invited them for. We should at least have the courtesy STA professionals to go back and close the loop. And I understand sometimes it's difficult with the volumes that exist for us, and that's where technology could come. And that's just one example, but I love Mukul's point about, you know, what is the simplest and the most powerful use case for automation in 
this candidate experience. I would like to add some points I show here that uh, it's true that when you didn't get a mail from the respective organization, it hurts, you know, right? And uh, the entire, if you see the automation process, the entire landscape has been changed. When you go back to three to four years back, the entire interview process has been different over there. Like a phase on to face to face interview was must be there. And even with a single face interview, right? any aptitude round or anything that will be they'll be coming to the respective organization they'll be having that you know interview and then other things but right now with the corona phase as well as the new norm phase that the entire part is being changed that like you know in a remote way we are doing the respective hiring process which there is a lot of lags over here that you know uh, the correct respective talents was not getting be hired over here due to the uh, maybe due to some of the uh, you know flaws over there. But still, when I when I talk about automation or a AI power tool, right, that reduces that particular respective you know uh, uh, correct respective decisions over here. For example, this I can give you a scenario here. Um, maybe you can all help me here. When you talk about a Java developer. Uh, a re organization will be expecting a Spring Boot, a Hibernate, as well as you know a Java in that, right? But when when we when we assess the candidate, just the coding, just the Java will be enabled. But what about the Spring Boot? What about the Hibernate? What about the Oops concept over there? So that is not getting tested over there, right? In a practical way. So in that case, I would like you know uh, to see a AI powered tool which analyzes all these skill sets, then picking out of the best is like you know it's a good way over there, which is like you know reducing the junk uh, and you know picking out the good set of talents is like you know it is helping over there. Uh yeah, great, Madhumita. Uh, thank you for your uh, views as well. So uh, now, uh, uh, as we all know that uh, technology is, uh, you know, helping uh, uh, people to in every 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 aspect. So uh, I just wanted to uh, ask to my speakers that how deep tech is transforming the hiring value chain. Deep tech. How how deep technology uh, is transforming the hiring value chain actually? It's changing it quite a bit. Uh, look at the journey of the last 30 odd years. I remember I joined GE in 2004 and this was G Capital International Services, perhaps the only contact center in India at that point in time, along with American Express. And we were growing massively and we had to hire a lot of people uh, who could sit in those call centers and do the voice or non-voice work. And one of the mediums for us, one of the most prominent mediums for us was to do a newspaper advertisement, uh, book a venue and go there and people will walk in and hundreds and interview them on the spot and give them a spot of a letter. Uh, I don't see that happening anymore. Uh, that print, offline print media channel of attracting talents gone. Time uh, knows that, right? You, you guys have been a part of that change um, where you yourself have evolved from having a solid revenue stream from your print advertisements to now more online based solutions that you're offering to the market. So there's a lot of enablement that technology has done with the aspect of finding the right talent and the way the talent has been approached by various organizations, be it through job boards, be it through other mediums, but there's so much evolution that has happened digitally on that front on purely the Attract, attraction and search front. And then maybe, you know, Amulya and Mukul can share as well as to where else has tech impacted. Um, Mukul's already spoken of candidate experience and I'm sure he's got more to share and then Amulya has got a few points. So Amulya, over to you. Why, why don't you share a little bit from yeah. your experience as to how you've seen yeah. the evolution? So though that advertisement you're talking about used to come on Wednesday, right? Time assigned to something. 
So that time we were in HCL, so we used to put 75,000, 1 lakh rupees, pan India. And of course, it's become digital. So uh, things have become much faster to approach to the candidates who are seeking whether it is active or passive. And once we get to them, uh, the information goes to them, I think. When they apply, or the screening where the automation actually is helping us, us a lot, right? So that is one. And then, of course, we are talking about earlier, your physical presence was there. So one thing that we have realized and learned, uh, like we learned how to use Paytm everywhere or digital payments, is how do we use digital platforms to do interviews? Two years back, we wanted everybody to come physically, but not anymore, right? So that has, that has actually... Uh, accentuated and made uh, interviews faster. The uh, time to hire has reduced, and uh, and and time to get to the candidates pan India, whether they are sitting in Kerala or they are sitting in Kashmir, uh, 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 we are there, right? And digital platforms and automations, etc., has also helped because if you are working from home anywhere, right now we have access to the best of the skills pan India. If you are not calling people to come to your offices and work for you. So that that I think has undergone a, a complete 360 degree change of what we were 10, 15 years back or maybe three, four years back to what we are right now. Right. So access to talent pool, uh, faster screening, uh, faster interview time, onboarding. Now we have so many platforms to do the onboarding, pre-boarding and onboarding and induction experiences. Right. And how you keep them warm prior to these people joining so that they don't have to. Uh, struggle when they are onboarded, whether they have done it remotely or they have, they have done it uh, physically, right? So that that is what the transition has happened, and uh, it, it has it has become much faster in last uh, four or five years. But as Salesh was saying, there were companies I don't know whether it was Microsoft or Google where they used robots for interviewing, right? But of course, that experience to the candidates talking to a a, a, a robot, it's 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 uh, you can't gauge the emotional stuff on other things. And then I don't know what kind of experience. I would not like giving an interview to a robot and get selected for maybe we are uh, we are from old school, but maybe our kids will because that's how time, times are changing and they will get used to some of the things when they uh, hit the uh, uh, job market in next uh, three to four years, right? So that, that's, that's what it is from me here, yeah, Mukul. Yeah, no, no, I think uh, uh, you and Shailesh have pretty much covered it. In terms of the value chain, though, you know, it's interesting that one of what technology, in, particularly in the area of recruitment, it has completely disrupted the intermediaries. So the intermediaries have gone, gone away because the information is now uh, available, like we just talked about. So earlier, candidates didn't know where the jobs are and uh, and the uh, companies didn't know where the candidates are. Now, now many companies simply say you can apply only through my website. Period. I mean, you can't come through any intermediary. Or, uh, like Shailesh earlier mentioned, you know, uh, the, the internal referral, right? So, so there are the, the sourcing and the and the so the intermediaries are very disruptive. And and hopefully, uh, the focus then is not about giving information on where the job is or where the candidate is but in hopefully preparing the candidates better for the job which is why you you hear a lot more of some of those companies transforming themselves into leadership training or coaching and skilling and enablement so that candidates are better prepared to go into the workforce wherever they kind of uh, go in based on their understanding and so on and so forth so so i think uh, the roles that different people have played in the past uh, in the whole value chain uh, have significantly changed and uh, a lot of those tasks are actually automated so a lot of the intermediaries are are not required anymore they need to do something different and and and, and provide a different value right mr mathur uh, so with all these questions now i i just would like to uh, request all the speakers to kindly conclude a uh, uh, with this topic like uh, with few lines so uh, mr singh starting from you i think the conclusion would be generic from my end <laughs> and i'll leave the more specific work for uh, mukul and amulya uh, but like i said and like i began 
automation has got a big role to play but we must not get hypnotized by the idea of automation we must realize where it can create maximum value and use it for those reasons uh, it may still be 30, 20 to 30 years away where the system can tell you hey hire this person this is the best guy for your organization that it turns out to be that way um, but if you look at use cases around enhancing candidate experience with better communication uh, reducing the recruiters time spent on non value adding adding activities like collecting documents over email uploading them on a portal simple things like downloading cv from a portal and uploading it somewhere else right there are more than 100 use cases where simple automations can make the process very very efficient both for the recruiter the hiring manager and also for the candidate so i think we must look at automation in a non glamorous way in a more practical way for now i think 20 years down the line and that's really my last point the world is changing towards moving away from using more of the two senses that we've used we've been using our mouth our speech and our ears so listening and speaking have been the two prominent modes of communicating and communication is a big part of the hiring process and so a lot of tools and technologies have been built around that what i see now is that more and more usage is happening with sense of touch and the sight so i don't want to talk to somebody on a call i'm happier chatting with them over a text app and i see that even more in the generation that's coming where people are not as open to the idea of having a conversation but more comfortable with the idea of being in their own space and texting and that's why the growth of chatbots that's why the growth of messaging applications that's also now being adopted by organizations with their consumer marketing strategies where everybody is texting you now because nobody wants to take a call from a company calling to sell somebody but if you send a text on whatsapp people might look at it and buy it when they want to right so the human behavior is also evolving people don't want to talk and listen unfortunate as it is for somebody who's old school like me but that's the reality i'm more comfortable reading something and responding at my own will rather than put into spot to take a decision or move forward with something in that very moment when somebody is talking to me right so the world is becoming more desirous of instant gratification but not when it comes to decision when it comes to decision the world is wanting to defer it and hence more aligned to the idea of chatting than talking and listening so tech will also need to evolve to support that human behavior in 10 to 15 years from now more and more solutions would have to come which enable the usage of two these two senses which is touch and visual than the audio and the speech absolutely right mr singh uh, so thank you for your views concluding views and now we will uh, move towards mr mathur so mr mathur your views please yeah thanks uh, i think uh, so i am a very big science fiction movie fan so i have this i will quote this famous saying that with great power comes great responsibility and i think i think that applies to automation uh, in any dimension in any area but definitely in the area of recruitment and so uh, companies that are kind of using or wanting to use which is just a matter of time it's not a choice whether they will or not it's it's a question of when they will and how they will uh, i think it's very important to make sure that you bring in the good and the efficiencies and and everything but not lose the human touch uh, and and uh, use that as an augmentation uh, to to reducing errors bringing efficiency reducing costs and so on and so forth but not as a complete uh, replacement of the human element of a recruiter and everything else that everybody talked about in terms of designing and 
and then using it in the in the right manner. And the other message I would have is for the candidates, uh, you know, and and I think uh, I've kind of heard and, and experienced this when I hear it from candidates. My my only point to them would be: look, uh, use it use it fairly, compete in the tool fairly. Don't don't try to beat it with with things that that you don't really believe in because you might go through a few hurdles and you might even get selected but that may not end up being the right career choice for you so make compete fairly but uh, don't let technology defeat you uh, and and i think that's an important one because don't assume that if you have not got the call it is your fault only yeah, don't assume i mean if you if you feel the conviction uh, use the human element which i talked about use the forums to reach out to the people uh, in the companies and share your point of view and and maybe uh, it's like in cricket you know you go to the third empire and appeal and say look i think the the empire on the ground didn't know what what it is doing but and and, and they may withhold uh, they may change the decision they may they may keep the decision but but uh, use uh, and compete the technology is going to be there so compete uh, with that in mind fairly and squarely but don't let it defeat you yeah absolutely right mr mathur so uh, mr sam yeah so i think uh, they have already summarized so digital transformation is the way ahead so if we do not adopt i think uh, will become obsolete and that's what we have seen in any organization so just read the book the amazon way and then you will understand uh, uh, what uh, amazon has done in terms of digital transformation simplifying it but they've never let technology drive the other thing so 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 is uh, true for recruitment as well right so there's a human element uh, the best thing which has happened because of the automation is that it has freed a lot of time for human beings to use their brain so that they can marry the softer aspects to the hardwired stuff. So if we are prudent enough to use technology for our advantage, for the organizational advantage, I think everybody will have a win-win situation. The organization, the uh, members that we are hiring and uh, the other things associated with it. So if we have the perfect blend of using the technology as well as that human touch and the soft emotion and the softer aspects, uh, uh, then uh, the uh, uh, the organization will be the winner. So that is that is where I would uh, like to end. That. Let's use it prudently. Let's let's adopt as much as possible to get rid of the mundane and the transaction, the operation, operational stuff, so that we use for whatever we have made. Human beings are made to use their brains. But I think, as Talish was saying, the copy paste, na JD, and everything. So the millennials, we find that they are totally dependent on the technologies that uh, we are right right I mean, colleges also for essays and all people are using chat gpt right they write so beautiful such a beautiful essays and they're doing all the homeworks but then the essence of us uh, the uh, the mammals the most uh, mother uh, evolution we are the highest so use our brains and use technology for our advantage so that is what it is all the very best for all the good times uh, that we'll see in next uh, 5 years or 10 years right yeah, absolutely, Mr. Sa. Thank you so much. Madhumita, would you like to uh, conclude with your views? Thanks, Balavi. So I agree with all of them that uh, you know it's a new norm to be frank on the automation part. So as Amuya said, that it's an upgradation for human beings also, right? So we were in a different view, but right now it's there is an upgradation which we need to adopt to that. And I guess pretty much the uh, automation is where at least minimum 30 to 40 percent is where it is doing the job easy for the HRs and for the respective organizations uh, you know to pick out the correct hiring talents uh, so yes uh, we need to adopt to it as well as I hope that automation will be in a good improvement and a lot of improvement in that respective tools right to get uh, good talents from the from the world actually right right madhumita so i think uh, human and uh, technology both have to have to work in a very balanced way so uh, thank you all the speakers for sharing their valuable thoughts and it's a great learning with you all so uh, and i would also like to thank to all the audience uh, who are with us and uh, listening to us 
So uh, stay connected uh, with TechGeek. We are coming up with a few other sessions in upcoming time. So thank you so much. Thanks, thanks, thanks again. Thanks, Madhumita. Thanks, thank you, thanks, so thanks Balaji. Thank you. Thanks, Akshay. Thanks, Mukul. Bye, Madhumita. Great job moderating the session. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.